Hey there, Power Platform enthusiasts. Welcome back to the channel. The floofs have abandoned me, but I've still got something special for you today because this topic was requested by you. That's right, straight out of the trenches. In my recent sequential approvals video, we explored how to capture approval details in different layouts using variables in Power Automate. I'll link it up above. Now, while Power Apps can display that data string perfectly, it maintains the line breaks and everything else, things get tricksy when you try to use that same variable in an email, completely loses the layout. So today I'm going to show you how to fix that using the replace function to format your emails correctly. Now, since we're already sending an email about this particular record in Power Apps, I'm also going to step you through deep linking in our CapEx app. On top of all that, we're going to use the new experience in Power Automate, and I'm going to show you some tricks I learned to make the deep linking even easier. Now, if you find this video helpful, consider hitting that subscribe button to stay updated with more Power Automate tips just like this one. All right, let's dive in. Here we are back in our dummy capital expenditure authorization form. No actual customer data is here. And if we look at the drone technology integration program and we navigate from expense details, attachments, all of this should be familiar from previous videos. The link is in the description below. We have a Power Automate tied to this button. Now, if we look at the Power Automate and how do we get there? I'm going to go out of preview mode, click on the button, and that shows us that we're leveraging the CapEx static approval flow. Microsoft changed this interface just today, so you're seeing the latest and greatest. We're going to click on the ellipsis and go to Power Automate, and then here are all the flows that I have, but we're going to work on the static approval flow. So if I click Edit, now this will bring it up in the classic experience. Now when I was playing with this today, I found a neat little trick that I'm going to show you. So we're not going to work in here, I just wanted to show you how to get here. You can also just go to Power Automate and fly, find your flow there. So here's where we left off last time. We appended a string to a variable, and that gave us this layout, which looked great in Power Automate. Now, one of my subscribers asked, how do we make this look good in an email? And we hadn't gotten to that point in this process yet, so let's look at the email. Now, in this email for demonstration purposes, I have the original variable text with no line breaks, and then I have the formatted one down below. You can see how much easier the one below is to read. We're able to control what's on what line. Now, if we go back to the flow and we look at the variable, here's where we set all of that. Now, if we look at the code view, you'll notice that Power Automate is using a SWAC N for a new line. We see it here, and when I highlight it, you see how it highlights it everywhere. Now, SWAC N is code for a new line, and Power Apps knows how to handle that. Outlook does not, as you can see here. It's just ignoring it. What it does recognize is HTML, or a line break. Now, if we were to do a new compose statement, so I'm going to add an action and do compose. I have to type a little more in there. <laughs> and then if we were to try and do a replace, let's, let's go into formula. And I'm going to type in replace, down arrow, and hit return. Tab doesn't work here. We're going to, at the time of this recording, tab doesn't work. You have to hit enter. And then what are we going to replace? We're going to replace within our variable, if we were to try and do slash n, and we're going to replace it with a line break, this isn't going to work. It's not going to recognize the SWAC n because it's OData variables. So actually, it's a URI component. So if we look at the final compose statement, the one that works, this is the code you're going to have to use, and I'll put it in the comments for you below. Now, I found a great blog article by Tom, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name. He's from the Czech Republic. He's an MVP out of the Czech Republic. I'll put a link to his blog article down below. But if you use decode URI component and then percent zero %0a, you'll be able to leverage the replace and get rid of all the dash ends, swack ends, and leverage that. So now if we look at our update item, I've left the variable in there because it's going into SharePoint and looks just fine in Power Automate. And if you do try and use, it looks just fine in Power Apps. And if you do use the compose statement in Power Apps, it's gonna look wonky because Power Apps doesn't know how to handle the HTML code that we're using there. Here we are in one of the approved records in Power Apps, and you'll notice that this is just a label, right? If this was an HTML label, it would be able to handle the line breaks properly, but we didn't set it up that way. It's just leveraging a label, so we can't do that. 
So we just leave our Power Automate as updating the approvals with the variable. And then in the email, we leverage the Compose output for that instead. Now here's where we get into the fun stuff. So if we look back up here at our start and wait for approval, I'm leveraging a deep link to our Power App. Now deep linking is always a good idea when you're doing approvals or anything like that because it takes the end user directly into the record that they're acting upon, makes it a better user experience. I've done a video on deep linking before, but this is a neat little trick that I found. If you put the HTML for your Power App with your deep linking code into the item link for your approval, and then you click into the area, you select all and copy. Now, if we scroll back down to our email, in the new experience, in this insert link, if you click on edit, and I'm gonna paste it in there, you see how it changed the ID into body ID. It automatically did it for us. So now we have the deep link in the body of the email without having to change the entire email body to HTML code, which is how we used to have to do it. Pretty cool little neat trick. So what is deep linking? I'm gonna cover that just real over, do a real high level overview for you here. If you look at the app on, uh, on start and the start screen, again, full video in the comments below, I just wanna show you. On the start screen, this is where you tell the app which screen to start with. Technically in the tree view hierarchy, it will always start on whatever screen you have first. I'm passing a parameter via my URL string and I'm saying, okay, if the URL string says admin, take us directly into screen details. And if it says user, take it to the screen main, which in my case is the actual gallery view that you see here. Now on top of that, with our on start statement, we have to do some code here. So if it is not past a param ID, if it's not blank, if it's not past a param ID, so we're not giving it anything in the URL, it's not gonna do anything. End of story. It's not gonna set our var form mode. It's not gonna do a lookup. It's not gonna set our var this item, none of that. But if it does have something, and if we look back at the flow, we are passing it the screen name of admin and the ID of the output's body ID. So we're passing it all that information. So if it gets an ID, it's going to set a variable, which is what we use in the app. Again, watch the previous videos, subscribe. And we're setting the variable, we're doing a lookup off the ID, and then we're setting the var form mode to edit so people can go directly into the app. Now, if this all seems overwhelming and you wanna play with it at your own pace, keep in mind, if you join my channel, you can then download the Power app download the Power Automate, and I'll even toss in the format for the SharePoint lists on the back end. Happy coding. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.